The best ones never die. The oldies and the goodies. The oldies but the goodies. And uh, one of the oldest ones, which is one of the goodest, is uh, this thing you hear a lot. You know, this is my truth. <laughs> Yeah, and you just have to live with that, you know, because, you know, there's no such thing as absolute independent truth, you know, but there's competing truths, and we all know those ones, you know, all the big ones anyway. Well, there's big ones and there's little ones, you know. Um, but they're a real feature of being human, you know, and, uh, and I come across them all the time, and it is something to relax about, I think, you know, because, um, well, if we didn't have that, it can be annoying, by the way, when someone puts a truth up and proposes that it is the truth, you know, and, and that happens all the time in big ways and small. It can be annoying, but what's the alternative? Um... The alternative is just to be a chicken or something, you know, where you're pecking around in the garden and you see a big crawly thing there and you say to yourself, that's a worm, and you go, bang. Yeah, and, and, and it gets no more complicated than that, you know. In some senses, you have to welcome the fact that you live in crazy town. You know, where people are putting about all sorts of competing truths with respect to, you know, let's say, a single issue. Um, and you just know that they can't all be true, and yet they are. You know, but it really doesn't matter, you know, because your only other alternative is to be as a chicken and call a worm a worm. <laughs> But it's the way it goes. And you, I, I think it's not something to get your knickers in a knot about. I'm wearing my favourite ones right now. Uh, but um, it's, it's something to love. It can be annoying, but then being a human is annoying. You know, just knowing you're going to die, for example, you know, that's annoying. Chickens don't worry about that. You know, they're just sitting there, and, um, there's a worm, I'm going to eat that. But they're really old, you know, and can't even walk and everything. It's about 30 centimetres away and they can't get to it. Uh, I want to peck, 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 uh, peck. Because, <laughs> you know, their legs have stopped working and so have their wings. They can't even drag themselves to that worm. No, peck. Peck, peck, peck. <laughs> yeah, I suppose a little bit of confusion there. And that might be annoying in and of itself, you know. But um, there's a lot, you know. It, look, you can call it annoying when people put up a truth. Yeah, and, um, and assert very strongly that, is, that it is the truth, an inalienable truth. Yeah, but I can alienate most most truths, can't you? Um, you can even, you know, even, well, obviously there's people like Descartes, you know, who was able to alienate the truth, the apparent truth that you even exist as a physical thing, you know. Um, he could alienate that much, you know. Like, he could alienate, what might be a truth for you that I exist. He could alienate that much. He wasn't quite sure about whether you can alienate the fact that you exist for you. <laughs> but all that sort of stuff. But even, you know, less philosophical and less cerebral examples of, you know, a truth versus the truth. Um, the all, yeah, the elusive, independent truth. Look, we have devices you know, that we have developed that um, <laughs> that can very much say, listen, for all intents and purposes, unless you're an idiot, 
you know, I've set up this experiment and you can test it yourself over and over and over again. Yes, of course, one day. Yeah. Like, you can, I'll set up an experiment, you know, um, cut the stalk on an apple and it falls down, right, o off a tree, you know what I mean? And, you know, and you can, make, you can run that experiment for 500 years with 40,000 people and over and over and over again, the apple will fall down. Look, you can say, for all intents and purposes, when you chop an apple off a tree and let it fall, it never falls up. <laughs> but you cannot, you know, as any scientist will say, that maybe one day someone will chop that stalk and the apple will fall up. <laughs> Some unexpected... <laughs> Um, gravitational force will be uh, floating past the planet at that point in time. You know, a tiny little asteroid about that big, you know, that's got as much gravitational power as a black hole or something and it just sucks, sucks the apple up and you're sucked up with it by the look of it, but you know. Anyway, um, but a truth versus the truth. And of course this sits at the bottom of all conspiracy theories. You know, because, um, you know, people can come up with, you know, like for any given... Ah, oh, matter that is at play in the world at present. Let's say political or anything else. Um, you know, and there might be ten different possible truths as to wh what's going on with that. You know? Someone somewhere in the political world said something, right? And you can sort of say, all right, I know, look, 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 you know, for all intents and purposes, we can all agree, agree on what that guy said. Make it Joe Biden or someone, you know. Or Donald Trump, you know, or Bojo, or ScoMo, you know, someone says something. Um, now, I didn't plan this, but all right, that um, it's good for the economy if you if you don't lock down. Yeah. Now, I don't, I'm not sure that that's fully tested. You know, maybe it's good for the economy to go full lockdown like we have in Victoria, and and absolutely destroy your economy, so to speak, for uh, you know. 110 days, and then get rid of the virus altogether like we have, and then go gangbusters and work bloody hard. Everybody, you know, work, 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 and make up for that 110 days, and the economy might end up better, you know, than it would have had we not gone into lockdown. Now, I don't know what the answer to that is. I think only time will tell. Um, but, you know, there are people who will assert as a truth that if you uh, lockdown is a bad idea for the economy, uh, possibly I'm not into the politics of all of this. I don't care. You know, I'm just using this as an example. And look, there might be one person who says it's a truth that going into lockdown is a bad idea for the economy. I mean, a good idea for saving X number of lives and all that sort of stuff, but a bad idea for the economy. And there might be another person who says going into hard lockdown, like we have in Victoria, is a good idea for the economy. In fact, the whole world should do it. Right, you've got two different people there. Now, both those people, you know, they're the two people I'm thinking about, the two, the two particular people that I've picked. That one asserts his truth, and he has a lot of evidence to prove that truth as far as he's concerned, you know. But so is that person, you know. So, you know, so you've got three parties there. That person, that person, and me, you know. Um, and I guess you can just be any of those three people, if you want. I just like being this one, you know. But, um... There's a time, I think, you know, and I, it's, it's, it's not a good thing if everyone's me. I think there's a time and place for that person. You know, what if that person, there might be other things going on where even though I might, you know, say, oh, I'm such a philosophical smart ass, you know, I can, well, you know, that person over there might say, it's a bad idea if the economy shuts down due to lockdown. Yeah, you know, because him and everyone he knows will absolutely, they will lose. So economically bad for them, yeah. You know, 
their coffee shops and truck driving businesses and everything might completely crash. The overall economy might be better. Look, who knows? I'm not an economist, and neither is he, and neither is he in this example. All right, But this person asserts something as a truth. Now, should I, on all occasions, say to that person, oh, you know, um, you know, really good economists from La Trobe University might easily be able to argue that you're wrong there. Should I say that to that person? Well, there's a time for being human, you see. When I'm speaking to that person, I might well sort of say, maybe I should say, actually, I think, I, I, I think you've got to be a bit sensitive. For that person, um, that person's wife, might be on the verge of suicide because his truck driving business is about to crash. You know, he's about to go under. They're going to lose their house. Their kids have to be pulled out of school, the whole bit. Right, so that I'm talking to that person over there. Uh, so what's the right thing to do? Not the correct thing to do, but the right thing to do. So I'm talking to that person, and um, he says, we cannot go into lockdown. It will destroy the economy. You know, do I say, ooh, you know, um, let's let's analyse that. You know, maybe the economy will be better off overall. And I haven't even checked if he's got a wife. You know, and then he says to me, "You are a bastard." I've got a wife who's on the edge of suicide here, and you know, you're being so smart. You know, oh, Eisenhower, ouch, oops. You know. And I've been a total bastard there. You know. So what I should say, and this is not being disrespectful, what I should say to that person, maybe, is just listen. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Shutting down the economy. Um, lockdown is a bad idea for the country in general. And, yes, you and I uh, should argue strongly in fact i'll sign your your petition do not go locked down i'll sign that you know and i'm not being disrespectful i'm actually being super respectful you know okay but then i've got this other person over here who says we have to go into hard lockdown we have to go into hard lockdown this person over here says and i could say oh i was just speaking to bert over here and his wife's on the edge of suicide but this person over here, uh, she says, I've got three grandparents in ICU right now with coronavirus. You know, sorry for not being all that sensitive uh, to some guy over there uh, whose wife... Um, Look, this person's probably being really insensitive and not apologising for it. But that person over there has probably got three family members and, you know, and her husband's got cancer and a few other things and um, coronavirus is running right, right through her family and all that sort of stuff. She thinks she's going to lose about four or five or six loved ones out of this. Um, and and she might say, and she'll, she'll sound horrible, pardon me if that bloke's wife, you know, can't cope with the ups and downs of life. But that's a fact of life. We've all had that situation. You know, economic distress and all that sort of stuff. That's just life. But I'm sorry if I don't feel sorry for that person over there. This is why you don't put that person together with that person. This is why social media is often a bad idea too. Because that person comes into contact with that person and they start screaming. They start screaming at each other on social media. So you keep those two guys separate. And me, as someone who's just under no duress either way, it doesn't make much difference to me whether we go into lockdown or not. Uh, that's just the way, because I'm just in my shed. Uh, um, and uh, actually, this has turned into a bit of a serious episode. Uh, so over there... That person, I might say to that person over there, now remember I've signed that guy's petition. Yeah. No lockdown. But over there I've just met this woman over here and I said, 
give me your petition. I'll sign it. She says, are you with me? I say, I'm with you. And then I go back to that guy and he says, are you still with me? I say, I'm still with you. you know? um, now, am I uh, being disrespectful to either of those guys? Am I sitting on a fence even? Well, no, I don't think I am. You know, I think maybe um, I'm just being sensitive. Now, I'm not always sensitive. Sometimes I'm horrible because I'm actually a little bit uh, not EQ driven. You know, I, I, I go for logic too much, really. But it's all about being a human. You know, do I want to be a chicken? You know, sometimes pure logic is just being a chicken and calling a worm a worm. But there's no, you know, that's not part of the rich tapestry of being a human. Part of the rich tapestry of life is to see that truth as the truth for that person, but a truth for myself. And that person over there, that's the truth, the only truth, inalienable, for that person, but it's a truth for me, and you can, and I can have multiple truths in my own head. Uh, is that the way to go? You know, I haven't thought this all through. I didn't intend to go down this path when I started this episode. But um, now there's a whole other level where you've just got conspiracy theorists coming at you left, right, and centre. Because, you know, technically, these two people are kind of conspiracy theorists in a way. You know, they're saying the, this is the truth and this is my evidence. And they've both got evidence for their two points of view. But they're saying, you know, and when they hear things on the news about what the government, what a government or another government is proposing to do, this person is saying that, you know, the government is pushing a narrative, you know, that is trying to drive us all into lockdown, you know. And um, and they're corruptly editing you know, news coming through on the airwaves and, you know, what people are saying. You know, they're being corrupt. They're pushing a narrative, you know, that person says. Um, the government and the media are joining forces to push a narrative that we should all go into lockdown and they don't care about my wife. And this person says the same thing if it goes the other way. You know. In fact, <laughs> governments tend to be a bit each way, or well, they do in Australia. Well, no, they don't. We've gone hard lockdown. But still, we're still shades of grey. We're not super hard lockdown. Now, like South Australia's just had an outbreak. And, you know, we crushed the virus completely here in Victoria. Uh, we've gone something like, I don't know how many days, 15, 16 days straight after the virus completely got away in our community. We had thousands of cases in a, in a community of millions here in Melbourne, and we completely crushed it. Yeah, there are people in America, funny comedians and all that sort of stuff, you know, Trump supporters and all that. That is absolutely impossible. Oh, uh, if it happened once somewhere in the world, you know, the thousands of cases of coronavirus got out in the community and, and then that community all joined together and stamped it out. If it happened once somewhere in the world, is it impossible? You know, and, that, and being an American, that, yeah, those, the comedians I'm thinking of would say, yeah, it's impossible. I say, but we did it. I say, doesn't matter. We're not talking about Mars here. We're talking about America. Yeah, but you know what I'm talking about. Huh? Yeah. Technically, look. I'll just finish <laughs> unceremoniously because I've said everything I need to say. You know everything I'm talking about. Yeah. Um. You can get conspiracy theorists coming at you with wickety whack conspiracy theories um, that, are, that are not on the same page as this guy's story and that guy's story. So, by being what you might call patronising to that person, I don't think it's patronising, I think it's being human and not being a chicken. You know, not being so super logical that you've got, you know. I don't even think it's illogical to actually sign that guy's petition and I don't think it's illog illogical on the same day to sign that guy's, that woman's petition. I don't think it's illogical. I think um, it's ra it makes rational sense, you know, um, in a human way, not a chicken way. You know. um, but there are, 
but these guys are just not in the same category at all. Um, there's a kind of rationality to those two guys um, putting up what I would call a truth as the truth. Because if that person doesn't put up his truth as the truth and push hard with that, then that person will get in the Prime Minister's ear or Premier's ear or whatever and get his way and his wife will die. And vice versa for that person. Look, there's a logic to it. It's like when you're in a war. Um, in the war, World War Two, I'm thinking of, for example, now, uh, the Nazis and the English, let's say, it was put into the heads of all the English people that the, that all Nazis are evil, you know, and they eat their own babies and all that sort of stuff. You know, they're just bad people. And uh, possibly the Nazis were told the same story. I don't know. Look, it happens usually in a war. But each of the two sides, the soldiers in those two sides and the civilians, each think that the other side is the evil guy. You know, we've got this in Ethiopia at the moment. Um, there's... Um, forces loyal to the current Prime Minister of Ethiopia um, honestly believe as the truth, not a truth, that their opposition, which is broadly speaking the Tigrayans, you know, are the bad guys. And the Tigrayans on the other side, they have it in their head as the truth, not a truth, the truth, that... Those guys are bad. And then in particular, Abby, the Prime Minister, is bad. And that by extension, anyone who believes Abby, or follows Abby, or supports Abby, Abby, is bad or misled. You know, something like that. You know, so you've got two people again, haven't you? So uh, if I was to talk, to talk to either of those two, you know, so let's say there's an, someone on the Tigray side, and they've got a truth that they're on the side of, they're on the right side of the war. And you've got the other mob, which is, you know, forces loyal to Abby and, 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 and look, forces loyal to the Prime Minister, Abiy Ahmed, and the idea of a united Ethiopia with no tribes. All right, that's one guy over there. You've got this other guy over here, who is all for Tigrayan nationality, you know, um, for Tigray to break away from Ethiopia. Tigray's a, an area, with a, a, a mob within Ethiopia. All right, you've got two different viewpoints there. Okay, Abby and Tigray. You know. So, over here, this guy, I might be meeting this guy over here, Abby is Hitler and a totally bad guy. Now, there is... Um, you know, upon reflection, I'm thinking, you know, and the whole world is against us, you know, and what we need. You know, and the whole world is corruptly pushing that narrative, blah, blah, blah. All right, same as before with the coronavirus example, you know. Now, um, if I, you know, and if this person comes to me and says, those guys are the bad guys, we're the good guys. Um... Or that we're on the side of the right thing for the future, you know, of Ethiopia and, and Tigray collectively. All right. Um, I, you know, I could say, oh, I'd like to analyse that. Oh, shades of grey, you know, this person's a bit right and wrong and this person's a bit right and wrong. It's all just different truths, blah, blah, blah. But no, they're in the middle of a war right now. So at the moment, this person I'm speaking to is in crisis. Loved ones getting killed all that sort of stuff. And this person is in crisis too. Um, yeah, loved ones getting killed. Yeah, a supporter of Abby. All right. And um, so to this person, I might say I'm fully supportive. And I should say that, even though in my head I'm thinking, you know, I've studied Ethiopian history a little bit, and shades of grey. I'll finish off, you know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, I'll leave it at that. It's not disrespectful to agree with both those guys wholeheartedly. 
and it's not the same as calling some conspiracy theorist that's coming at you all the time with conspiracy theory after conspiracy theory after conspiracy theory, each of which is a one in a thousand chance. Multiply that out. One in a thousand times one in a thousand times one in a thousand times one in a thousand. He keeps coming at you year after year with these wacky ideas. That guy... I'm disrespecting him if I agree with him every time. But these two guys I'm not disrespecting. I think that's what I'm trying to say.